Well, hello, 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 everyone. Good evening. Welcome to the Real Talk Show. I'm your host, Dr. India White, and I'm so excited to share with you guys the show today. We've got an amazing guest that will join us this evening for the show, uh, Miss Angela Fosilico. Um, and so with that said, I just want to say that you guys are definitely, definitely, definitely in for a treat. So um, go ahead and share the show. Go ahead and join. Welcome, welcome. Um, so glad to be here with everyone. And so I'm going to just take a moment and just kind of, for one, wish that you guys are hanging in there or wish that you're doing okay. I know a lot of us are dealing with just this whole COVID thing. We're dealing with the summer. Kids are out of school. And we are doing our best day by day uh, to support each other. And so I just first want to just say I wish that you guys are all doing um, wonderfully. And uh, if not, then, um, you know, you have my thoughts and prayers with you. So um, with that said, I'm going to talk a little bit about our guest and then we will, um, you know, be expecting her presence um, later on the show today. So um, our guest, uh, Ms. Angela Posilico, uh, she was an expert vocalist of the year. She um, is a very accomplished uh, professional woman who um, has a gift uh, to sing, but also she has a gift of fashion and she has the eye of fashion. And, and so um, I think we'll be able to learn a lot from her. Um, I, I don't want to, you know, steal all of her thunder. So um, I'll definitely let her uh, kind of come on and, and share herself with us. Um, but I know for me, I'm super excited because, you know, she's mastered music. And I know my personal testimony um, with music, um, you know, I was okay in music, but not necessarily <laughs> like, I mean, I played saxophone and I sang a little bit, you know, but I was no, you know, genius like this. Like, um, so it's really, I'm really excited and I'm looking forward um, to hearing more from her. So hopefully, you know, we can get through any technical glitches and then we'll go from there. But, um, you know, a little bit about my background with music and everything. I, um, you know, I studied saxophone uh, when I was in middle school and I was okay, but I mean, I was not the best. And then I went on uh, to also sing in the, in the chorus in my middle school and in my high school. Um, and so with that said, you know, it just kind of became um, a really neat kind of hobby for me to do. And um, I think that out of it, I really learned how to follow my passion and how to stay committed. Um, you know, as a marching student, I'm so grateful for the expertise that I got as a marching student, um, you know, in the marching band when I was in middle school. And, uh, and then, of course, that led to high school. And then I played in the Gator Band and played saxophone. And we had a great time there and met some great friends, including my friend Dre Graham, who was um, the Florida Teacher of the Year Um you know, for 2020, 2019, 2020. So um, some really cool things did come out of that experience. Um, and so, you know, I knew a little bit about music, but not, you know, like I said, I was not an expert like, you know, um, our guest is. So we'll be waiting for her to come on. But until then, I can tell you that um, some really fun things I also learned about music is there's such a, uh, there's such a spirit of like camaraderie and, and unity that comes together whenever you um, have music uh, as that piece in your life. And so uh, music is so calming. It's a universal language that we can all relate to. You know what I mean? And so um, it's just really, really neat. And um, I just really am excited and I'm looking forward to hearing more uh, from from Miss Angela when she does um, get a chance to join us. Um, I can tell you too, um, it was in the marching band that I met, you know, my first true friends. It was, you know, in chorus class, I had wonderful friends. You know, I had a wonderful, wonderful chorus teacher. Um, 
Mr. Johns is amazing and, um, you know, just taught us so much. I don't know if uh, any of you guys that are watching can relate. Some of you might have had Mr. Johns um, as your teacher down south. If you did in Sarasota County, you totally understand uh, Mr. Johns and his way of work. And he was famous for his cup of coffee. He would have like a mug of coffee that he would drink every day y'all and it was like just straight black coffee and he would drink and then he would make us do like all these Ooh! sounds and stuff so <laughs> it was a lot of fun and I felt like I could sing you know and uh, I was at that time I was soprano um and loved soprano and then that kind of led me to singing um in church and I also played my saxophone in church and that was a neat experience as well um singing in church I started out soprano but then my voice changed and then I went alto and then I just kind of was like, oh, I don't know if I'm really cut out to sing. That doesn't mean I can't really handle a tune or, hand, you know, but but I feel like um, I might do better with playing saxophone in a church or something. Because, <laughs> I mean, it's like you just learn notes and you, you know, you either know how to read music or you don't or you know how to ad lib or you don't. And so I'm very grateful for my experience um, in the world of music. Um, now, fashion. Now, that's something I'm definitely excited about with this show. Um, I have been to um, one of these fashion shows with Mrs. Um, Angela Posilico and these beautiful women. You guys, it is a knockout. I'm telling you, <laughs> nothing like the experience. You have to be in the room to feel the vibe and to get that energy. Um, it's so exciting. You know, I thought I knew a little bit about fashion, right? And then I went to one of her shows and I was like, oh my gosh, like <laughs> those women were beautiful. So thanks for joining. If you're joining me here on Facebook or YouTube or other social media channels, welcome to the Real Talk Show with Dr. India White. Thank you so much for joining my channel. Please go ahead and like and share. Um, our guests will be on any moment. And I'm just sitting here talking to you guys about um, my background with music and how I feel I was so disqualified with music, uh, <laughs> but Miss Angela is not. So she's going to talk to us about some of that and about fashion and some other things. So I'm really looking forward to the show. Uh, but I can tell you that um, one thing I do love is the people that I connected with when I was, you know, especially in the Gator marching band. Guys, I, I still have wonderful friends from that. If you have children and you're trying to get them active, do not forget about marching band. I know, you know, we push the sports. I'm all for that too. But there is a blessing in having your kids sign up for marching bands. And studies do show kids are smarter when they do enroll in a band um, or in music. Uh, so, and uh, I know music is everything. I, I can remember even using music, you know, when I was, you know, carrying my children. I, I don't know about you mothers out there, but I would take, um, you know, classical music like Johann Sebastian Bach is my favorite composer. And I would just take his music and just, you know, put the microphone to my, my tummy and let my babies listen to it. I think it works. <laughs> I mean, who knows, you know, my son's gifted, so we'll see. Um, but, um, and my daughter is very smart. They're both like top of the class. So, um, you know, who knows, but music is everything and, and there's different types of music, right? Not all of us are going to um, be ready for something like American Idol, um, you know, or that type of music. There's different classes of music. And so with that said, I'm going to now introduce you guys to our special guest, Miss Angela Basilico. Welcome, Miss Angela. How are you? Ah, welcome. How are you? doing great it's so great to see you this evening thank you so much for being my special guest on the real talk show with dr india white and so with that said i told them a little bit about you but i didn't want to spill the goods so <laughs> <laughs> tell us a little bit about yourself uh well let's see uh i think i'm gonna have to give you that short reader's digest uh version but um I've, I've got a peculiar background. I mean, I know a lot, a lot of people know me, you know, as being the CEO for Miss International World and Miss Latina International Beauty Pageants. But when I uh, graduated in high school, I really, my career was really to become a professional singer. And I did that. Uh, I got a scholarship to the Juilliard Academy of Music in New York. 
uh, where I graduated with a master's degree in uh, operatic studies. So I went that path as, as well. And I even performed at Phantom of the Opera. I was an understudy yeah. for that. And then I went on, uh, several years ago, I went on an East Coast tour for Phantom of the Opera. But while I was doing that, uh, I got involved with the cosmetic industry. Because, you know, you always have to have a job yeah. on the side in case something doesn't right. work out. <laughs> so I did, I did that. And that's how I got involved with pageants because I um, I was a trainer for Long Cone for over 12 years. And yeah. I worked in New York City for about 27 and a half years for several different cosmetic companies. And uh, I used to have a lot of beautiful pageant women that used to come to my counter and say, you know, I need to, uh, I need to get some help. I'm going into a pageant. I want to have some makeup ideas. And I used to look at these women. I used to say, oh, my God, if they need help. And then I need to get a facelift. <laughs> so they were beautiful. And I did a lot of makeovers for them. And a few of them actually hired me to go out to some of their national and international pageants. Oh, wow. So I did that. And that's how I got started in the world of pageantry. I became a makeup artist for a lot of these different, uh, make, you know, a lot of these different pageants. And then the strangest thing that actually did happen is one day I'm in the back room doing makeup. and the entertainment that one of the pageant directors uh, hired did not show up. So somebody got this bright idea and said, well, Angela's a singer. And meanwhile, I'm not even dressed for this. Okay. I'm, right. you know, I'm in the back doing makeup and I'm in my old clothes. But luckily for me, I just happened to have a tape in the car. You know, back then they were using yeah. tapes. <laughs> so I got a tape and I performed. And from that point on, every pageant was hiring me to go out and sing. Oh, wow. So, and then there was a pageant director out in California that knew of me and uh, worked at that far that I was a singer and performing. And she had started a new pageant called Mrs. Globe Organization. Okay. And she said to me, why don't you compete? She said for Mrs. New Jersey Globe. And I said, you know what? Okay. I said, I'll do this. I said, but I doubt I'll win. She said, no, I have a good feeling about this. So I did. I can, in uh, 1996, I competed. In the Mrs. New Jersey uh, Globe pageant, and I won. That's oh, wow. the surprise I won. So, and then I went out to nationals and I made the top 10. And then I became a director for the Mrs. Globe organization. But every year they would actually have an event which was called the Globe Awards. And I was the singer, I opened up the Globe Awards. And then I went out to Greece and opened up the international pageant out there singing. Very nice. So that was my entree into pageants. And then when I moved to Florida, because my husband had gotten transferred for his job, they did they already had a director for the Globe pageant here, and I was going to assist her. But then I decided to start my own organization, because in Florida, especially in South Florida, the Latin community was so big. And there were so many Latin pageants, but no one was doing anything uh, for a scholarship program or doing a crossover into the American market. So that's what I did. I decided to start, I started out with Ms. Latina International and somebody that you know very well, a very mutual friend of ours, Al Otero, yes. okay, was, believe it or not, was one of the founders for Ms. Latina International oh, along really? with myself. And he was the one who encouraged me to uh, do a scholarship program. And then we, we had the a Latina pageant for many, many years. And then about six years ago, we evolved into the world pageant. Because we had so many, we had so many women who had said to me, "Look, I do not have an Hispanic background, but I love what you do. I, you know, I love the fact that what this pageant stands for." So we started the World Organization, and today that actually became better than the Latina pageant. Oh wow! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so uh, teaming up with Al Otero was absolutely fantastic. And of course, as you know, I am with the Global Trade Chamber. Yeah. I'm the coordinator for their fashion shows for 100 Successful Women of uh, Business, which I happen to be a recipient of last year. So it's been an amazing journey. And that was, to put in a nutshell, that's my whole story. That's how I got involved with pageantry. Well, I, I first just want to say, wow. And <laughs> congratulations. And I am so happy that you have evolved into your gift and into your strength and that you are shining and helping so many others. And I'm telling you, I'm so excited because I've got 
so many questions for you. So I, I, I want to go back to a little bit. I mean, it's like you have so much grit and so much <laughs> talent, you know, and there's a, a verse that says, you know, somebody's gift will make room for them. And that's exactly what's happened for you. You know, you singing at a pageant and then singing at all these other, uh, you know, different pageants that were going on in these different, um, you know, events like that's incredible. And right. so, exactly. you know, I just want to ask you for those maybe younger people or those that um, are aspiring uh, to go into a passion of singing. Um, how did you get into your craft as a vocalist and studying at Juilliard? And, you know, what made you want to do that? Like, what was there an epiphany? What happened? Well, from the time I was two years old, my family threw me on stage. Because when I was a baby, <laughs> I was I was born, uh, the nurses used to tell my mother that I used to keep all the other babies up at night. And they said, this kid's going to be an opera singer. And my, my entire family, believe it or not, either was a dancer or a singer. Oh, now, going way back, and when we traced my family tree, they did find out that we were related. I'm like a 16th cousin to the great Caruso. Oh, wow. So my roots go, go very far back. And I sang all the while I was in grammar school, all the while I was in high school. But while mm -hmm. I was in high school, I joined the uh, acapella choir. Yeah. And I had an instructor by the name of Vincent Vespoli, who just knew that, you know, he, he used to tell my mother, he said, when she gets on stage, he said, she just takes that audience by storm. So he trained me for four years. And Hackensack High School had uh, a scholarship program for each division. And that's how I got the scholarship to the Juilliard. I mean, they, wow. they even told my mother when, it would, when I got it, they said, well, Angela was going to get this one hands down. But here was something that um, I would probably say was a big boost to my career. And I would have to say 1971, President Nixon visited Hackensack High School. And he was very impressed with the educational program that we had. And he saw that Hackensack, we were like number 20. And all of a sudden, we were number three behind California and New York. Oh, oh. And he had told his administration, he says, I've got to go there. He says, I have to find out. He says, what they're doing. He said, this is unbelievable. He says, the education they're getting down there is amazing. So when he came to the high school, they decided to have the acapella choir sing. And we had a lot of major celebrities that came out that evening because President Nixon beat in the high school. Right. And they made me sing a solo. And I actually sang for President Nixon. Oh, that's so neat. <laughs> and later on, later on that year, I was invited to the White House to sing for President Nixon by a very famous clairvoyant, Gene Dixon who had heard me sing that evening. So from that point on, that's how my career actually took off. And that's how I got my scholarship to the Juilliard Academy of Music. Wow. That is amazing. <laughs> See, I would have never known, you know, like that is so <laughs> just inspiring for so many others out there. Just, you never know. It's like you have that ability to just show up and to be ready at all times. And it's like doors just keep opening for you. And I thank you so much for sharing that because that was super oh, neat. Thank you. you were able to sing for a president of the United States. That's nothing light. It was very oh. prestigious accomplishment. How did you yes. feel? <laughs> uh, you, you know, to, to be honest with you, normally the stage, I'm never nervous on stage. But when they asked me that night to do a solo, oh, was I shaking in my boots? I probably didn't show it, but I was because I said, oh, my God, here I am singing for a president of the United States. But that wasn't the first time that I had an encounter with the president of the United States, because oh. I have to admit, President Kennedy was my idol. And oh. I'm probably never going to forget President Kennedy because he was assassinated the day after my birthday. Uh, my birthday is November the 21st. He was assassinated November the 22nd yeah. uh, in 1963. And I had decided one day to sit down and write a letter to President Kennedy. And normally they'll always have their secretaries write back to them. He actually wrote back to me and signed the letter oh, because wow. of what I had put in the letter. And I told him, I said, I totally admire you, your wife, your children. I said, and 
from what I understand, I said, I think you're doing a tremendous job with this country. And I was only maybe about nine, 10 years old at the time. Mm -hmm. And he was so impressed with that. And I still have that letter today. It's in my scrapbook. I've been offered money for that letter, but I will not. <laughs> no way. So I have it in my scrapbook and it is signed by, it says it, President John Fitzgerald Kennedy. And it's, so that was, so that was my first encounter with the president of the United States. My second encounter was President uh, Nixon. And then my third encounter was President Bill Clinton. Oh, really? Which I, my husband was asked to drive in his motorcade twice. And I had the distinct pleasure of meeting President Clinton. And I'll tell you, uh, not to get political, because I know there was, you know, some things that went on in that administration. But he was probably one of the most intelligent people that I ever had the distinct pleasure of sitting down and speaking to. He really was. And a very compassionate man. But he was the type of person that when you went in to speak with him, you better have your facts straight because he was the type of guy that would notice if there was a light bulb out in the room before you'd even get there. So wow. I, I have to say that it was an honor to have to know three presidents in my lifetime. That is an honor. And I it mean, is. That is nothing to take lightly. Thank you for sharing that. And um, so... You talked about your transition. One thing that one thing that I've noticed that you you just have down is it seems like success follows you and you know how to take a moment and make it a moment of opportunity, no matter where you are. I mean, you transitioned from being a vocalist in New York, you know, studying at Juilliard, doing professional vocal singing, which I shared with you know, the show sooner earlier that I, I wish I could be like you. I don't have the, <laughs> the vocal skills. I don't want to sing today because I would hurt your ears. But, no, you know, no, no, I, no. I, I played saxophone, but, you know, nothing like that, you know, nothing on that level um, at, you know, Juilliard. But one thing I've noticed is, you know, you transitioned from Florida or from New York all the way to Florida and you mm -hmm. have just exploded into this phenomenal career as a CEO of Miss International World, Miss Latina. Now you went all the way from vocal to now fashion to now pageantry. Like, how did you do that? What, if you maybe could, you know, tell us one word or, or one idea, what would you have for people out there that are aspiring to be entrepreneurs or aspiring to be like yourself? Well, I would probably say the one word and you said it is transition. If you are in the entertainment business, You've got to know everything. Uh, I had a vocal coach that I studied with in New York City by the name of Allison Starr. Uh, and she was on the Dean Martin show several times. Uh, and I trained with her on and off for about 10 years. And that was one thing that she said to me. She said, Angela, if you're going to be an entertainer. You better do everything. She said, you better be a singer. You better be a dancer. You better be an actress. Uh, even being in the cosmetic industry. She also was the one who encouraged me to go into fashion. Uh, she had put me in a few fashion shows when I was in uh, New York City, and she said, "You've got to know it all." And I would, I would, anybody that wants to get into this business, I would just tell them branch out into different things because you never know one thing's going to lead to the next, and you just don't know where that path is going to lead you. You could start out being a singer, and then all of a sudden you take dance and you become a professional dancer. Uh, right. It's like with me, who knew that I was going to get into the pageant industry? You know, I mean, I competed in a few pageants, but I didn't think it was going to become a career path. But it certainly did okay. because one thing snowballs after the other. And I've, I mean, I've met a lot of celebrities just recently. I had the very distinct pleasure of taking some ballroom dances with uh, Max from Dancing with the Stars. Him and his oh. brother Val. They own a. Uh, they in fact they own a dance studio right here in Boca Raton called Dance with Me, and I took a couple of classes with them. And during this pandemic, Max and his wife on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on Instagram, they gave the most phenomenal phenomenal exercise classes that you could possibly imagine. So for three days a week, I was working out with Max. I was also <laughs> taking some virtual classes with him. But before the pandemic, I did go into one of his classes live, danced with him. And it, it was just an amazing experience. When you learn from Max, you learn how to dance. Yeah. <laughs> and I've studied, I've studied with some great dance teachers, but I would have to say 
Max is the tops. So wow. this is, it, it just it just leads into all of these different things. So you said the correct word, transition. I love it. And I, I just like your grit. You have a grit about you where you persist and you continue to push forward. And, and so like you've been able to create um, the Miss International World and Miss Latina International Organization. And I, I just want to ask you a little bit about that. And then also, how did you get connected um, with the global, you know, trade chamber in the 100 successful women in business? You know, how did all this magic or just blessing, just how did all this transpire? Well, two words, aloe terra. That's how <laughs> I got involved with the global trade. I have no... Here's a funny story. And if Al is listening tonight, it'd probably kill me. I know Al in a roundabout way from the disco era. He was from Boston and I've lived in New Jersey and I used to drive all the way up to a disco club called Lucifer's. And oh. Al and I kid each other all the time. We probably danced together and knew one another back then. I think we hung out together. So uh, we go that far back. But when I came to Florida, Al was heading up the uh, Broward County Chamber of Commerce. Okay. And that's how I met him. I, met to, I went to one of those networking events and I got involved with him and I gave him the idea of what I wanted to do. And the first thing he said to me, what do you mean a pageant? He says, get out of here. He says, uh, he didn't even want to get involved. But I said, wait a minute. I said, this is a little different. I said, I want to do a scholarship program. I want to start with the Latin market. So he called me up and he says, you know, I've been thinking about this. He says, this is a fantastic idea. So we wrote out a business plan and he really guided me on all of this. And that's been the success story, uh, you know, since then. As I said, I started out with the Globe organization with Tracy Kemble and was with her for five years. But when I came here, I would have to say that Al was probably the best thing that I met. Um, in fact, we joked about it last week. We said that for almost 10 years, every night of the week, we were at networking events. We went from Miami to Fort Lauderdale. We went down to the Florida Keys to do a show. We went all the way up to Orlando. But we built a network of people. Mm -hmm. And if you speak with Al today, and this is very true, so many people that we started out with almost 18, 19 years ago are not even around today. Al is still there. He's the consummate networker. Yeah, And when he started the Glo Global Trade Chamber, him and Maria, and then I got involved with Maria, and that's how I got involved with the Chamber. And when they started 100 Successful Women in Business, they pulled me in. I started uh, doing their fashion shows, and we're about ready to start something new. I'm not going to announce it because they're working out the plans, but there's something exciting coming down the, uh, the pipe. And the rest is history. Very nice. Wow. Well, thank you for sharing that. And yes, Alotero and Maria, they're wonderful people. And I count them as a part of my own tribe. And so it's just, it's just exactly everyone. since we met, you know, and uh, it's, it's just been just getting better and better and better um, as we go by. So uh, thanks for sharing that. And, you know, um, so speaking of projects, you mentioned that, um, you know, you guys worked on some projects together, but I know that you've got some projects also brewing, um, you know, and in, in light of COVID, in light of things going on, you're yes. still taking advantage of this season to be proactive, to pay it forward and to be proactive, to still mm -hmm. bring up the good in this situation. So I would love for you to share with us about these projects that um, you have brewing. Um, as well exactly well right now uh and and you could even see it on social media we have a project going on which is called the people's choice award we partnered with pageant planet and uh the girls can have their family and friends go in and vote for them it's a dollar a vote and right now the girls are raising a lot of money and this is also a fundraiser for COVID 19. okay and I get very emotional when it comes to COVID-19 for two reasons. One of the young ladies that we had that held our title of Miss International World Haiti back in 2017, she's a frontline worker and she works for Jackson Memorial Hospital. And when this pandemic started, and of course, doctors and nurses didn't know much about it when it first hit our shores here, 
he contacted COVID-19 very, very bad in the hospital. She was in the hospital 21 days in the ICU unit. Wow. And when she first contacted it and she went home, well, she didn't know because, you know, nobody was even getting tested at that time. She had a one-year-old baby and the baby became positive. And when she, wow. even, when, even when she recovered, she had to stay away from her son. But luckily, and I'm happy to say they both recovered. She's back working again. Great. And that, that was a time when the hospitals didn't even have PPE uh, equipment. I mean, they were taking garbage bags and putting it on themselves just to try to protect themselves from this deadly virus. Wow. wow. And then on Easter Sunday, I did a FaceTime with my cousin, and I was not prepared for what I saw. She contacted the virus. Mm. And she's only 54 years old, two beautiful children, eyes bulging out of her head running 103 fever and trying to talk to me. And that's when I realized, I said, you know what? This is for real. This is not a joke. I mean, there's so many people out there think this is just the flu. It's not. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've had two people tell me that that was the sickest they ever were in their life. You know, in 2007, and, and I have to say this, and, and I'm going to, hopefully a lot of people will take this very seriously because I was a culprit of that. I always worked out, always kept my weight down, never smoked, never even drank in my life. In 2007, I suffered a massive heart attack on my way up to Disney World, July 4th to be exact. So I bring July 4th in with a pack. And I was one of these people that says, oh, this will never happen to me. You know, I'm in great shape. Well, it did. And when I had my heart attack, I contacted pneumonia at the same time. And I had to go on a respirator. Being on a respirator is no fun, okay? It's like having one foot here and one foot in another world someplace. Now, I'm alive and luckily God was on my side, so I'm here to talk about that. And I have been going strong ever since. But if there's a lot of people out there that don't believe that COVID exists, I could tell you firsthand, if you get it and you get a mild case, fine. But if you get it where your lungs fill up and you have to go on that respirator, I feel for you. And I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. And having two people very close to me that had this illness and told me, they said, Angela, the pain they were in, the agony, the headache, the body aches, and then waking up where you can't breathe. And I know that firsthand. When you have to take that second breath and the doctor tells you, you've got to go on a respirator. You know, at that point, you're on God's good graces. You might, you have to say your prayers. And if you don't believe in God, you better start at that particular moment. Because that, no matter how great the doctors are, no matter how far advanced we are with our medicine, it is up to the good Lord as to whether you're going to stay here or whether you're going to go with him. That's it. So that's when I took this extremely serious and I decided that, I was going to start doing fundraisers. My whole, my pageant this year, our whole platform is COVID-19. And I have said to myself, if this is going to be my destiny in life, well, God better keep me alive to make sure that I find a cure or I help find, okay, a vaccine for this. And you've got it right there. I have teamed up with Bahama Paradise Cruise Line, who is my sponsor where my pageant goes every year, they have the Folding at Home project. Now, what we've done with that is right now, because the cruise lines are, are not sailing, we have taken our unused, okay, computers and have donated that to science and researchers wow. so they can have more computer time to help find a cure, okay, and to help uh, find a vaccine. And just the other day, I was telling uh, a very good friend of mine that when I worked in New York City, and I was working for the cosmetic companies and I had gotten some very good training, especially on the skincare line. I went to a seminar that Dr. Fauci did. And I will have to tell oh, you, wow. his knowledge is impeccable. My doctor and I were just talking about that yesterday. And he said, Angela, I agree. His knowledge is impeccable. And when he turns around and says, I fear we are not going on the right track or we can't get a grip on this virus, take his warning. Because it's it, it's it's there. I mean, just today, Florida had over 10,000 cases. This is no more a joke. I mean, you know, and I know a lot of people out there don't want to wear, uh, you know, they don't like wearing a mask. 
Fourth of July weekend, beaches are going to be closed. I understand that. You know, I get both sides of it. I get that there's a lot of people that are just very frustrated because we've been on lockdown for so long. And I understand that. But just tonight, they had it on the news. They showed what the emergency rooms look like inside, what the ICU units look like inside. And to be honest with you, it's not a place that I want to go. But I feel for these people because I've been there. So I know, I know what it's like to be critically ill. For a doctor telling me that if I didn't get to the hospital when I did, 30 minutes later, I wouldn't have been there. So this is the reason why I have taken this very serious. Because if we don't get a vaccine or we don't get some cure for this, this could go on for a while. And, you know, when you look at the statistics, almost 130,000 people in the United States have died from this. I don't know what it's going to take to prove to people this is real. Oh, you know, you could turn around and say, yes, a lot of people die from the flu. But we have a vaccine for the flu. They even have medicine for the flu. Okay. Where if you get it, you might be sick, but on, you're not going to go into this. I know people that have gone into the hospital and they've gone there within 48 hours. Their lungs are filled up. Some of them made it and some of them didn't. You know, I had a very good friend of mine in New York that only survived four days from COVID-19. Wow. So when I go to bed at night, I say my prayers and I say, God, if you put me on this earth for something, this must be it. And if this is my destiny, let me get in on this fight. And once we have a vaccine, we have a cure. You know what? Do with me what you want at that point. You know, but I, I just have to get into this. I just can't sit here and say and stand to see my fellow americans even people i don't know and even people overseas they're just succumbing to this virus yeah. so i i'm there and that is going to be my project and i will follow that through uh, and like right now they are there are some promising things i mean it looks like we're going to have a vaccine hopefully by the end of this year beginning of next year they do have remdesivir, which if you get critically ill, you could be on. There's a steroid medicine, the blood plasma, which is excellent. But, you know, for some people it'll work and other people it won't work. Right. Uh, you know, but hopefully we're on the right track now. And if more and more people would just get involved with this and try to do fundraisers and get this, this is my goal to get the money to the researchers and the scientists. and that uh, I, there's really no more than I could say is that my heart is really into this. And I'm not only in it for me, but I'm in it for everybody because we are all in this yeah, together. We are. And I, I commend you for, you know, being on the front lines with this project. Thank mm -hmm. you for always thinking of others and not just of yourself, Angela, because I tell you, that's been your life story. You've taken your greatness and you've constantly laid out the rug for others and not yourself. And so I pray that God will bless you. Um, and I know we were talking about Bahamas, but you said some things that really stirred my soul. I do, I have loved ones that I know of that, you know, are in the, you know, same boat with the sickness of COVID and everything. And, and I've had yes. other loved ones that, you know, were able to make it out. Some did it. And I can tell you, um, it's kept me on my knees. It's kept me on my face praying for them. Um, and I am, at all i just believe jesus is the answer for the healing and you know i don't Great. know what the vaccine you know we don't know about the vaccine but i do know there is a god in heaven that heals i've been healed of so many different things in my life and i just believe that if we believe in this god uh, we, we got to give him room to work as well yeah we have to be wise and you know follow what the doctor's telling us you know right stack up on our ginger stack up on our vitamins stack up on our um you know, different things are um, uh, elderberry, you know, exactly. Time, you know? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm trying. I'm, uh, I'm being mentored by some wonderful people, but, you know, stack up on all that stuff. Make sure we're taking that. Right. Make sure we're doing our lemon with water, whatever. But then at the end of the day, we've got to know, you know, we've got to call on the Lord. Jesus, heal me. I need you. You know, we've got to hold on to the word of God and to know that his word is sure and that he is real and he can do this. He can heal. He has healed people. But the thing is, he's also going to work with us in this time as well, like you were saying. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, there's, there's there's been a lot of things that have gone on. I mean, 
you know, unfortunately, look what happened to George Floyd. Yeah. But I'll be honest with you. I commend these protesters because what they did, they're getting change in Washington. I mean, I, you know, and, and that's another thing for listeners. Black life does matter. Okay. They say all life matters, but black life does matter. I grew up in a neighborhood which was basically African American. Okay. A lot of my friends, my high school, a lot of my friends were African American. And to be honest with you, I used to, I love New York City. I used to go to Harlem. And I used to I used to go to the theaters there and everything. I used to go to the Apollo. Apollo, yeah, I've been there. Uh, Apollo was great. And some yeah. of the music the music was fantastic. Yeah. And you know, we we went through a period in the 60s, especially when the civil rights bill was passed. We went through that period. And you know what Dr. Martin Luther King said, I have been to the mountain. I have seen a dream. Yes. He said, where everyone could get along. And then all of a yes. sudden, it seemed we revert back to that. And that's not right. Because yes. as people say, you cannot change the color of your skin. You can't change it. It's I mean, you, you can't you, change you, the spots. Exactly. You can't change it. But you know, there's good and bad in all. I don't care if an alien came down from outer space. You might some might be good, some might not be good. It's right. good and bad and all. And right. we're all God's children. Okay. Exactly. So what that police officer did, that was terrible. I mean, a man is fighting for his life saying, I can't breathe. And then you had people saying, Well, you know, he may not have had a good past. He did some things in his life. Well, that goes for everybody. Everybody's got a dark side. You know, as they say in Star Wars, don't cross over. Everybody's got that. But the most hardened criminal in the world deserves a second chance. And it was a man who was getting a second chance in life. His children, I mean, what broke my heart is when his little daughter said, my father was trying to change the world. And he did. Okay. And I just hope that what he did, okay, it did, you know, it did come forth in Washington. They are passing a bill. The police, the, the police officers have to change the way they do things. Okay. But it was not only for the police officers. I think it's for society. I think now people are going to realize and we're going to move in the right direction. Okay. Right. And like I say, there's good and bad in everyone. And you just, you have to learn how to get along with everybody. Okay. Yeah. And that's, and I mean, even with this COVID-19, it just doesn't hit one group of people. It hits everybody. Okay. This virus knows no boundaries. So are you, if a person like me, could I stand there and say, oh, I'm not going to help you because you're a different color skin than I am. That's ridiculous. That's crazy. As I said, we're all God's children. God put us on, all, he put us on earth. Okay. Yes, so if you're going to do something, you do it for the good of man. You do it for everybody. Not because someone is different than you or you don't single people out because they may not be like you. You don't do that. I mean, look, in the United States, we have the first African-American president, Barack Obama. Yeah. He was a wonderful man. He was fabulous. And what I loved about him, all life mattered with him. He didn't care who you were. OK, he took us all in. And that's the way it should be. And I think you're right. And I, I think that. um you know, the, I don't, I just feel like heaven is trying to get our attention. Mm -hmm. uh, exactly. And, and with George Floyd. And I think, you know, I don't understand why racism and why, you know, these things have existed. It breaks my heart because I have had my taste of it, of course. Right. I mean, I've been called the N word, you know, when I was in kindergarten, I, you know, I, I, couldn't date interracially because the color of my skin, um, you know, I can go on and on, but right. the thing is, you know, it breaks my heart because I have children, you know, I have a black son and I have a black daughter and I, I would hate for my children, um, God forbid to experience a George Floyd moment in their life. So right. it really kind of made me also think like I have to, you know, raise awareness as to how we as a nation can come back together. Some of the best people in my life, you know, 
do not have my skin color. You, I have mentors that are white. I have yeah. spiritual fathers that are white. People that I love with all of me, my best friends are white. So, I mean, I say this because I see exactly. the beauty. I see the beauty in collaborating with other races. And I see the beauty in all of us joining together. Me meeting you, me meeting Al, me meeting Maria. Right. Like, yes. It's beautiful. So my thing is like, um, you know, I pray that, you know, even though people might be proud of their heritage and they might be proud of where they came from and, you know, they want to preserve, you know, whatever concept they have in their mind that they right. also remain open-minded enough to see how beautiful America has become and how it has evolved with the unity and the diversity and the equity that we were all striving for. I mean, look at the protests back in Martin Luther King's days. There were peaceful protests. He got a lot done. You he know, got a lot it's, done. It's Amazing. Like that's what they're trying to do today. And I am for the peaceful protests. I'm not for the looting. I'm no. not for the destruction of people's right. property. But I am for peaceful protests. And I am for people sticking together and saying, yes, all lives matter. Yes, but Black Lives Matter as well. And we want to distinguish. And I, I think right. what it is, Angela, is it's, it's not that people are being nonchalant when they're saying all lives matter. I don't think that's what it is. But I think that the, the message that people are wanting to say with the Black Lives Matter is that if Black Lives Matter, then we have to be accountable enough to show exactly. that Black Lives Matter. So that's right. And feel that all lives matter, but how are you going to show or emphasize in your way of work, in your way of relationship building that Black Lives Matter to you? You know, right. and that means that's being more culturally sensitive. Like Starbucks, mm -hmm. they had yeah. to do a whole cultural responsive training when they had that incident years ago with the guy. Yes, I remember that. that. Starbucks, they did a whole training and i feel like that's kind of the message or the voice that the black community is wanting people to to just kind of come forth and say you do matter you we care about you enough to make a a, a difference and to emphasize by the way right. we treat you by the opportunities we give you and by how we support you and bring you into our tribe as well and i think that you know unfortunately the looters they are saying that, but they just don't know how to voice that. And they, they, yeah, that, that's, that's very true. That's very true. Well, look at yourself, okay? When I met you uh, up in Tampa, I, I said to my husband, I said, wow, she's amazing. Now, I looked at you as a person. I didn't look at you as the color of your skin. I said, oh, my God. I said, she's amazing. When I told my husband tonight I was going to be on your show, I said, I'm so excited. I said, she's so dynamic. She's great. And when you come to my pageant, I mean, you see diversity. I've got women from all around uh, uh, the world, okay? Every nationality, every skin color, everything you think of. I mean, even my entertainment. Uh, Tito Puente Jr. is my headliner, okay? Now, his father was the great Tito Puente, okay? We're going to be doing a, a special for his father. Uh, Melina Almadova performs for me. I mean, she she's Latin. She's amazing. Now, my host, believe it or not, is Lamont Easter. He's a veteran actor, okay? African-American gentleman. One of the most handsomest guys that I share the stage with. In fact, when I get on stage, I go, oh, I have to be up there. This guy is so good looking. But he's, ama he's amazing, okay? He's absolutely... So look at the diversity of, of my show, okay? Yeah. And this is what it's all about. Cultures coming together, okay? Uh, you know, I had to hear... Last week, the vice president was making a speech, okay, when they were going to go uh, into Tulsa there. And he couldn't bring himself to saying black life matters. He just said all life matters. And they kept asking him over and over again, okay, about black life, uh, you know, and, and he couldn't say that. And, you know, I'm saying to myself, you're the vice president of the United States, okay? If you can't say that, Okay, then something is wrong. You shouldn't be the vice president of the United mm -hmm. States because if you're the president and the vice president, you're representing all Americans. You don't single out anybody. Okay, right. and that that kind of got to me, and I'm saying to myself, you know, that should not be. That definitely should not be. You have to, if, and especially if you're in the limelight like that, you have to respect everybody. You have to take everybody in. You have to be accounted for everybody. 
It's just not singling. It's just not singling people out. It's just not so fair. it's just not fair. You know, like that's like no. I mean, you wake up with what blue eyes, green eyes. That's like if everywhere you went, you are just totally isolated out. Like the there was a lady that did. I think her name was Carol. She did a, a case study like that where yes. she discriminated against people of the color of the eyes. And it's like you can't help that God's giving you those beautiful eyes. You can't help that. You know, it's just a part right. of life. But then you you get discounted. You you get you know different opportunities you can't get, or you have to worry about your life being taken from you because of yeah, that's. Horrible. That's crazy. It's 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 really ridiculous. So I am hoping that, you know, I think we're on the right path right now. I think yeah. that the Congress has finally realized that hey, they have to do something. And you know, I'm not saying that all police officers are bad. You've got some great no, police officers out there. I have a spiritual father, a, a father that is an officer who I love with all my heart. You know, so I I mean I know too many wonderful police officers. I, I had a student of mine. Who is now an officer? Ah, and that's great. He's an American doing phenomenal things, and he's a pastor. So, yeah, I I think we cannot clump everybody into the same class. You know, it, that's it right. is a case by case situation um, like this. But I think that you know we can also be overly optimistic, believing the better in people and believing that there's more good than bad, and in that you know for the most part we all do want to come together. Um, exactly. And you said something before that I've always uh, I've always put other people first. And one of the things that I totally believe in, this is not about me. This is about everybody else. You know, right. uh, I could be out there promoting myself 100 percent, but I promote my girls because I feel this is an opportunity for them. You know, I want to take my experience and teach them what I know so that they can go out in life and say, hey, you know what? I've got, uh, you know, Angela helped me with my career. I mean, I've had a lot of women in pageants that have gone on to become doctors that have had their own television shows that have been professional models. So it's really about them. Okay. And it's the same thing with, you know, this COVID-19 it's, it's not about me in a way it is because, you know, I'm a victim of it too, because anybody can get this virus, but I feel it's more about me going out and helping other people. OK. Yeah. And I try to keep myself safe as much as I can. Uh, you know, I follow the rules. You know, when I'm out, I wear I constantly wear my mask. I social distance. I do a lot of work from home. I stay out of crowds. I'm the biggest party of going. You know, if you told me there's a dance party going on tonight and we didn't have this virus, I'd be there front and center. I would be there. But, you know, right now, if I have to stay home a little bit more, because it's going to not only help me, but it's going to help the person next to me. You know what? So what? It, things are always going to be there. You know, like 4th of July, I always go to Disney World. I'm going to miss that. They're not open. But I said to my husband, long after I'm not on the face of this earth, Disney World's still going to be there. So yeah. if I have to wait a little bit longer to do something, but I know that we're all going to be safe and we're all going to be healthy, then that, that's what I have to do. Exactly. You know, and it's there's nothing wrong with that, you know. There is not. And I commend you for that. And and again, I know people are going to want to get involved with this project that you have. And yes. so I hope that you know we can, you know, contact you. I know they're going to want to know how can they reach you and you know, also they might want to see a pageant and you might have some young ladies that might want to get involved. I'm glad that you emphasize too that it's not just a Latina pageant, but that no. if you just are interested and you would like to, you know, go and, and go there, you know, and, and be a part that you have a room for them as well. And I, I just want to say, you know, before we release your contact information, you are a classic mentor Thank you. to young women and to young leaders. We need more Angelos out there because <laughs> uh, that is the key to our success. I mean, even when you were talking about your teacher that mentored you and trained you for four years and that built your craft, you know, and now you are giving back in an exponential way. You're building entrepreneurs. These girls aren't just beautiful. They're rock stars. They're doctors. They they're are. Those, they're entrepreneurs. They're, they're doing phenomenal things. You know, it's because they, they have you as a mentor. And uh, we need more mentors like you. So I just want to say thank you for being a mentor and thank you. Also for your mentorship, because I, I know you have so much um, knowledge and so much expertise. You just 
just bubbling over with the wealth of knowledge and abundance that that you are just able to share out with people. I love your confidence. We need that. We need more mentors like yourself. And so Thank you. I'm sure people will be asking you questions like how can they sponsor? How can they get involved with the COVID project? How can they get involved with the pageantry? And so if it's okay, I would love for you to share, just highlight any websites, any um, ideas, any information that we can contact you with. Absolutely. Well, I'm on Facebook. I've got three different pages there. I go under my personal name, Angela Basilico. Uh, we also have, it's under MS International World, MS Latina International. Um, my e direct email is MS intl world at aol.com um they can call me direct at 754-779-2978 and my website is www.msinternationalworld.com and we're also on instagram as ms international world so several ways to contact us okay and I'm so glad you shared all that information. I did um, highlight the email and the website. Yes. And you guys can also follow up with this. Um, we are on the radio, on the real talk show. If you're just joining us with Ms. Angela Facilico, a fashion expert, CEO of Miss International. So many accomplishments here. And uh, I'm just, we're just so honored to have you on the show. And uh, we're definitely looking forward to seeing more coming out of this home project yes. and more with the pageants. Do you have any um, events brewing um, other than the um, home project? Do you have any pageants coming up? Any Anything coming up that we can look forward to? Well, the next pageant, we, we had to move it only because of, of you know, the pandemic. Yeah. Uh, we were supposed to do it in July, but we have now moved it to uh, February the 19th through the 21st. It's going to be on Bahama Paradise Cruise Line. And I do want to say this is that of all the cruise lines out there, Bahama Paradise Cruise Line was the only cruise line that started this folding at home project and also just got the green light from the CDC to sail. I mean, what they are going to do as far as the safety precautions is unbelievable. When I read what they will be doing, they're right up there with Disney World. It's going to be absolutely wow. fantastic. So we're going to go on their new ship in February, the Grand Classica. Uh, which is going to be, uh, it, it's its a beautiful ship. It's its absolutely amazing. And our port of call is going to be Nassau, which is great. Okay. Um, I do have, uh, with Al and Maria, of course, 100 Successful Women in Business. Mm -hmm. Of course, if our numbers stay down, that's going to be uh, September the 19th. Yeah. So uh, I'll be there helping them coordinate that show and also probably do a fashion show. Uh, there were so many other things that were planned, but because of the pandemic, some things have been canceled till next year. Some things have been moved, but right now that's where we stand with events. But of course, anything comes up, it's always on my social media page. So I'm always, every day I'm always highlighting something different. And your social media page again, um, so that we can know, is it just your name, Angela Basilico? Yeah, go, go to my name, Angela Basilico. People can instant message me there. And then I could always bring them out to the different other pages that I have. Okay. Wonderful. So I'll, um, I'll make sure to, you know, highlight that so that they can see that as well. Um, you know, and so thank you again. I, I am very, very grateful that you are on our show. And, um, if you guys are watching, thank you for tuning in. This was the real talk show with Dr. Olivia White. We had our distinguished guest, Ms. Angela Pasilico, uh, who is the CEO of Miss World, Miss International World and Miss Latina International. And she is also part of the 100 Successful Women in Business. Thank you so much for joining us and for tuning in. And till next time, you guys take care and continue to keep it real uh, while serving others. Have Thank you so much. And it was a pleasure and an honor to be with you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Angela. Have a wonderful night. You too. Thank you. Bye. And now.